I want to begin by saying, before we can correctly understand the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we really need to know the Holy Spirit himself. Because if we don't know him, fanaticism will result. Who is the Holy Spirit? So when we know him as a divine person, not so much because what most people talk about is his power. Most people talk about what they believe the Bible teaches about the Holy Spirit, but they focus on his power, his gifts, his enablements, but very few focus on the person who is the person of the Holy Spirit. Because once you know the person who is divine, God Almighty, then you begin to understand he's worthy of your adoration. He's worthy of your faith. He's worthy of your love. He's worthy of your surrender. Um, when, 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 when people see him as a power, when they see him as gifts, uh, when they see him as influence, they really rob him of who he is, of his divine being, worthy of worship, worthy of surrender, that is due to the Lord. And, uh, when people see the Holy Spirit as some mysterious power or mysterious influence, uh, in their weakness, in, in people's weakness, uh, they're trying to get hold of him out of ignorance. But when people see him as a real person who is holy, wise, mighty, tender, then we want him to use us. We surrender to him. So when people say, well, or think, the Holy Spirit is power or some mysterious influence, in their ignorance, they want to use that power. But when they see him as a person who's worthy of our adoration and faith and surrender and love, and, and now we, we understand he's holy. We're not thinking about gifts and power and influence. No, he's holy. He's, he's so wise. He's, he's so mighty. He, He's, he's so tender and loving. We say, all right, Lord, now use me. I give you my life. I'm not going to use you in my ignorance. I want you to use me because I see who you are. You're holy, you're, you're wise, you're mighty, you're tender, you're loving. You're caring. And, and so, you know, when, when, when people see the Holy Spirit as power, they say, well, how can I get hold of him? When they see him as a person, they want the Lord to get hold of them. They say, Lord, take, take me and use me, and so on. So, yes, the Holy Spirit, is a person, and I want to just deal with that for the next few moments because this is what changed my life in 1973 when Catherine Kuhlman introduced him in a service that I was at in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, as a person because she said, the word she used was, he's more real to me than you, and suddenly 
something erupted in me when she said the words, he is more real to me than you are. And then she said, he's all I have. He's all I got. Please don't grieve him. He's too precious to me. She was crying out. Uh, a cry came in me, Lord, I want to know you like this. And that's where I wrote and why I wrote Good Morning Holy Spirit, because I felt this book, well, I need to share what I learned through that amazing woman of God. And then later, when the Lord, the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord, revealed himself to me. When I got on my knees that night, never forget that as long as I live, December 21st, 1973, I said, Catherine Kuman said, you're her friend. Now, she didn't really say those words, but that's really what she said. I said, Catherine Kuman said, you're her friend. Can I know you like that? I don't think I know you, but can I know you like that? Because, you know, whenever I was in church, and I heard some amazing messages from the pastor of the church where I attended. He never talked about the Holy Spirit in that way. It was always a, about power and gifts and manifestations and feelings and emotions and goosebumps and all the rest of it. But never did he, in whatever time I was there in Canada at, at his church, never one time did he even mention, mention, that the Holy Spirit is real, a person as real as Jesus, as a loving friend, as a glorious, mighty helper, who's always there to help us. I mean, he never said that to me. I, I never heard that from my pastor. And those few words of Catherine Kuhlman changed my life. When she said, he's all I have. I'm thinking, well, uh, what did you say? He's all I got. Please don't grieve him. Please don't hurt him. I'm thinking she's protecting someone like that, whom she loved. And, you know, when I went to the church that I attended, they thought noise was power. They did all kinds of things and songs and dancing and tambourines everywhere, but no, no, real, uh, no real presence of God. And I told the story. <laughs> Goodness gracious. There, was a, there was a young man in church who had a demon. He had a devil. And the pastor, Pastor Jim was the name, he would call people up every Sunday night to the altar. Not to be saved, just to come to the altar. And the same people always came back to the altar. And I was not one of them. I wasn't one of them. Because I thought it's too, uh, no need, you know? So a lot of us just stayed in our seats. But he'd say, anybody who wants, and whatever, he gave uh, some kind of an altar call. But it really wasn't for salvation. It was for church after church. Glory time, they called it. And that's what they called it, glory, glory time. time. <laughs> and it was so glory time. There goes the poor group of people that wanted more something from heaven that they, didn't, they couldn't find during the service. Mm. And so anyways, this guy goes down. And I was sitting, I think, front or second row, I can't remember. And I see him passing by, and I knew him. I said hi to him a few times. And I see him going by, and he starts shaking a little bit. And trust me, people all around him were trying to rub it off of him and take some for themselves, and they didn't know there was a devil in there. It was really funny. Wow. I knew the guy had, had, had a demon because he had told me so. And he began trembling and shaking a little bit, and those people around him began you know, touching him and hoping that some of that would, would, would come on them. And this guy came with us to a Catherine Kuhlman service later, stood out because I said, listen, I said, I said, you're never going to find freedom here. I said, why don't you come to Catherine's meeting and people get free there like this? I said, you come and during the service itself, nobody has to lay hands on you. You'll be free. 
he came, the devils would not let him go in the service. Wow. Right before the doors opened, he began to freak out. He began to, to really go crazy. And he couldn't breathe and this and this. And he ran away and went to the hotel. And I never, I never saw him again. I never saw him again. The poor guy, I felt so sore, sore for him. In church, every Sunday he was looking for someone to help him or something. And we all felt badly for him. But nobody knew there was a devil in that guy. He came on the bus. So we took, I think I ever told you that. He came on the bus because Jim Pointer was such a loving man, the man that really touched my life in a great way. So Jim would take buses down to, to uh, Pittsburgh from Toronto, and he had met him somehow too and, and invited him to come with us. And uh, he, he came. He was a much, much older guy at that time than me. And so he came on the bus. And the poor guy, the whole time on the bus, he's hoping God would set him free. And yet when he got to the door at 5 in the morning, we were all at that door waiting for the doors to open at about 8. Service began about 9-ish. And as the doors began to open, he began freaking out. The devils attacked him right outside, and he ran. Wow. It was so sad to watch. But these are the results, and today in many churches, these are the results of no Holy Spirit revelation in the hearts of the people. They, they, they hear a lot about gifts and power and, inf- and on and on. Nobody tells them there is a person, a real, loving, tender, wonderful helper, always at your side, ready to, ha- to help you in any emergency that comes up in life. So when I got home from Catherine's meeting the first time, now, we had gone many times. There was one time went with that, we took that young man. But I had been there before. But when I went there the first time, I came back home. And I prayed that prayer I told you about on my knees that same night. I said, I don't think I know you. Can I really know you like this? From there on, something began happening in my life that many of you have read in, in the book, Good Morning, Holy, Holy Spirit. If you haven't, please read it. It'll probably help you. But the, the one thing is that I began to say to him, I said, reveal your word to me. You wrote the Bible. I want to know it. Can you help me pray? Because I'd read already how he helps us to pray. I said, can you please help me pray? Because I don't know how. Everything changed when I began talking to him. Dr. Bill Bright had campus for crusade, a wonderful man of God, who became my very dear friend for many years before he went to heaven. And he moved to Orlando, where I had lived at that time. And he brought a young man with him, and we would, we would meet every month. Dr. Bill Bright and I would meet for lunch. And he brought a, one of his people with him who was an evangelist, very influential, powerful man uh, that worked with him, who was very anti-charismatic, very ultra-conservative. Dr. Bright was very much like you and I. He was... He was People did not know that about him publicly, but he was a real uh, Holy Spirit-led man, no doubt. He really knew the Holy Spirit. People didn't, didn't know that, but he and I talked about the Holy Spirit a lot. And he was as, as precious and as loving uh, uh, of a man of God you, that you, 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 I've ever met. <clears throat> so he brought one of his men. And this gentleman was about to go on a trip. And he looked at me and said, are you? And we were talking about the Holy, the Holy Spirit, and he, he wasn't very happy about the discussion. So he looks at me, his man, this gentleman, looks at me and says, are you telling me that I need to talk to the Holy Spirit? I said, well, he's a person, isn't he? He said, yes, but I never thought about talking to him. I said, why don't you try? He said, well, yeah, but we're supposed to talk to God. I said, but he is God. So he said, well, but, and he was a little confused in his head. He said, well, who do I talk to? Do I talk to the Father, to the Son? I said, there's no competition in the Godhead. What are you talking about? And he he kind of got all frazzled because he he wasn't uh, ready for my my wild ways because I was really going at him. I said, look, I said, you're about to go preach, right? Because he had said that. 
he was on some evangelistic trip. I said, yes. He said, yes. I said, okay. You ask the Holy Spirit to help you up there on that platform. I said, don't you go on that platform before you invite him to go up with you. He said, okay, I'll try that. And I said, help, and I said ask him to help you preach. You, you need him when you preach, don't you? And I went through the scriptures with him of what the Lord said. He will testify of me, glorify me. And he did it. A few months later, he came back. He looked at Dr. Bright. He said, Benny is right. I've never had more, I've, I've never had more souls saved in my meetings. I've never seen so much of, the, of God's presence in the, in, the, in, the, in the services. And Dr. Bright looked at him and smiled because he knew that. But he, he discovered that person is that real. The Holy Spirit is that real. If you're not asking for his help, you are losing a lot. You are losing a lot. So the Word of God tells us he is a person with knowledge. He's a person with feelings. He's a person with will. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2 for me. You're going to read uh, verse 10, 11. Because here you, you see a person who thinks, a person who feels, a person who decides. Please read that, will you? Yes, sir. Okay, verse 10 and 11. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man? save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Okay, now this says, read verse 10 one more time, and, and notice what that says. Okay, go ahead, one more time. But God hath revealed them unto us Keep going. by his spirit. For? For the spirit searches all things. Stop. Anyone who searches has a, has, has a mind, wow. has thoughts. Mm. He searches all things, even what? The deep things of God. That's a lot of searching. Yes, sir. That's a lot of thinking. Yeah. Okay? And keep reading. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Oh, spirit. stop, stop. So he is, he knows. He has knowledge. Yeah. Keep going. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even, even so, so, the things of God knoweth, knoweth what? No, no man. But but the Spirit of God. So he knows. Mm. Tremendous knowledge. Such a, an, an amazing person to know things we need to know. Yeah. Now, here the Bible tells us knowledge. He's, he's a being that knows truth. Go to 1 Corinthians 12 and look at verse 11 because there it tells me he has a will. Uh, a person of sovereign majesty who uses us according to his will. Mm. Okay, read uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit. That's right. Dividing to every man severally as he will. So here we see the Holy Spirit as a person of sovereign majesty. Sovereign majesty using us according to his will. So earlier we, we, we saw thoughts, knowledge. Now we see will. Let's look at something else I think is so precious. Let's look at Romans 8, 27. Because here you see feelings, emotions. Read that. Wow. Romans 8, 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, uh -huh. because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now that includes thought. That includes purpose. That includes feeling. Read that again. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Do you know that that word mind includes thought, includes feelings, mm -hmm. includes purpose. So when it says mind of the Spirit, He's saying thoughts, yeah. feelings, purpose. So read that again. Yes, sir. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind that of is the, the Spirit. God the Father searching the hearts knows the mind, the thoughts, the feelings, the purpose behind the thoughts of the Holy Spirit and 
because he maketh intercession for the saints according and to the will think, of God. And think about that intercession. Intercession includes purpose, yeah. deep knowledge, mm -hmm. deep thought. The personality of the Holy Spirit comes right through those verses. But now look at something else. Look at emotions. Look at Romans 15, verse 30. Look at, at one of the most touching verses about the Holy Spirit, one of the most touching revelations of truth about the Holy Spirit is Romans 15, 30. It says what? Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love, love of, of the, the Spirit. Spirit. For the love mm. of the Spirit. Okay, I just gave you enough verses to convince people he really is a person. But there's way more than that. There's way more than that. So, how often do we think about the love of God? All the time. How often do we think about the love of Jesus? All the time. But how often do we think about the love of the Spirit? Rarely. But Paul thought about that when he wrote that. Yes, sir. Read it again. Yes, sir. Romans 15. Now I beseech you, brethren, for he the He says, Lord, I beseech you, keep, keep going. For the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit. Wait, wait. For the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Mm. For what he did on the cross. For what he continues to do in your life. For who he is as Savior, King, and God Almighty. And for the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me yes. in your prayers. This is so powerful. It really is. That, that we cannot even pray right without knowing the love of the Holy Spirit. Wow. We cannot pray right. Read that again. It's so powerful. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Yeah, for his sake for his person, for what he did and what he does and continues to do in our lives. And? And for the love of the Spirit. That deep, amazing truth, so moving, so touching. Keep going. That he strive together with me in your prayers. Yeah, well, well, you cannot strive and pray without knowing what Jesus did and the love of the Spirit. Yes. Okay, let me explain that now. Let's talk about the love of the Spirit. Um, here we see something. Let, let me just show you, show you something. I think so far. The love of God sent Jesus to earth. For God shall love the world. The love of the Father sent Jesus to earth. The love of the Son, the love of Jesus, was, was, was so displayed with such glory when he died for the saints. So the Father sends him for the saints. He dies for the saints. He dies for the church. But where would we be if the Holy Spirit did not draw us into that love? We'd be lost. So the Father sends the Son out of love Jesus dies because of love, and the Holy Spirit now draws us in love. He's the one who brings us into that love of God. Yes. So none, none of us would know that Jesus died without the Holy Spirit revealing it. Yes. So this is why he says, for the sake of, for Jesus' sake, for the love of the Spirit, pray for me. Pray with earnest prayer. Pray with intensity. Pray and mean it. Let's go to Nehemiah 9.20. Because here we see that the Bible calls him the all-loving, good Holy Spirit. Nehemiah 9.20. Thou gavest also thy good spirit. To good them. spirit to instruct, you gave them your good spirit, Tom, about Israel, to instruct them. 
you did, you did not withhold manna from their mouth because of the goodness of the Holy Spirit. You gave them water for their thirst because of the goodness of the Holy Spirit. It's connected. That whole verse is connected. You gave your good spirit to instruct. You gave your good spirit to give them manna. You gave your good spirit to give them water. While they rebelled, yes. while they wanted to go back to Egypt, the Holy Spirit is all goodness. Not just all love, he's all goodness. And he is such an amazing person. He's such a loving person. He's such a patient person. Patient with me. I don't deserve that patience. Yeah, we call him Jesus. He is the spirit of Jesus. And I was listening to Pastor Chris when he said that I call him the Holy Spirit is Jesus, you know, with no limit. Because he is the spirit of the Lord. When people ask me, who is he? He's Jesus unlimited. But the thing that is really important is we have to understand. The Holy Spirit is the one at work today in our hearts, in our lives. It's his voice we hear. So today I was praying, and the Lord spoke and said something very beautiful to me, and I thanked him. But who was speaking? Whose voice was I hearing? The one in me. Now, the one in me, this blessed person who comes to dwell in our hearts, Look at Ephesians 4, 30. It says something very, very powerful here. And we all should know that, 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 that by heart. I'm still focused on the personality. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed. Whereby you are sealed. Dear Lord, I'm feeling it in my heart just saying it. Whereby you are sealed. You know what, what a seal does, right? A seal does, it says, it's mine. No one will own this. It, I seal it to be mine. I bought it. Put a down payment on it. Sealed with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Unto the day of redemption. Not just sealed for only a week or two. Sealed till you are in the presence of the Lord. But this amazing person who, who dwells in our hearts, who sees every act, every performance, every word we speak, every thought we think, think about if anything that, that in, in that act or word or deed is impure or unholy or unkind or selfish, or untrue, it deeply grieves him. Yes. So grieve not. Read that again. Yes. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Now wait, wait, wait. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God who is, who is in your heart, who sees every act, who hears every word, who knows every thought within you. And if there's any act or any word or any thought that is impure, that is unholy, that is unkind, that is selfish, that is untrue, this precious one inside of you is wounded. Yes. You wound him deeply. It says so. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. You cannot, you cannot grieve a something. You grieve a someone. Mm. This verse alone should convince people he is a real beautiful, sensitive person. 
That's why his emblem is a dove, a dove. Now, gentle as a dove. And here, the words grieve not the Holy Spirit. I pray God will cause those words to sink in our hearts and, and sink so deep to keep us from sinning against him, to keep us from grieving him. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. I pray those words today all throughout the world, in every pastor's life, in everyone's life who's listening, I pray those words will sink deep in your hearts. Sink so deep that you will not sin against him. That to know if I hurt him so much, if I grieve him so deeply, the one who loves me so deeply in, in, and eternally, if I am grieving him like that, with my impure thoughts and impure words, impure deeds, with my selfishness, with, un, with my lies, I'm grieving him. So I'm going to stop all that so I don't grieve him. So we're talking about very, we're talking about a very blessed, precious, holy, deeply loving, eternally loving person, that Jesus would say, if you speak a word against me, I'll forgive you. You speak a word against him, I won't. That's really scary. Yes. If you speak against me, Jesus said, the Son of God himself, I will forgive you if you ask me to forgive you. But if you say one word against the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness. Not even my blood will wash that sin from you. That is frightening. If you dare blaspheme him, you will never be forgiven. There is no forgiveness to the one who blasphemes the Holy Spirit. Why? He is that holy. He's called holy. Holy. Holy Spirit in the Bible. Holy Spirit. Every time you see his name, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. And this blessed Holy Spirit can be easily grieved. I've said to him many times, you can punish me all you want. Never leave me, Lord. You can punish me all you want. Because we deserve that punishment. And punishment shows us he loves us, you know. But never leave us. Because leaving is, is, is very frightening. More frightening than we can ever imagine. Because once he leaves, he, 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 he doesn't come back. Rarely comes back. And we don't know when he leaves. We all know when he comes, but he never announces his departures. The Holy Spirit is so precious, he announces his, his arrivals, never his, his departure. When he came, all Jerusalem knew it. When he left Samson, he didn't even know it. Samson did not know. It says he wished not that the Lord left him. So it's very, it's, it's very scary. People go on, you know, trying to shake themselves like Samson, and well, the shaking that doesn't work no more. Because it says he shook himself. He was fine a few times, and then the shaking didn't, didn't, didn't do it because the Lord had gone. May we, nev may we never grieve him that deeply. Lord, may we never grieve you that deeply that you leave our life. Lord, never please leave us. Never please leave us. Like David, I pray, create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Please, Lord, please, take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of salvation if we lost it. Uphold us with a willing heart. In Jesus' name. And the people said, Amen. 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 That is my, I pray that prayer, I think more than any other prayer. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with a willing heart and spirit. 
So shall I teach transgressors your ways and sinners be converted to thee. I pray that probably more than any prayer in my life. Because he can leave. He can leave. Now, this precious Holy Spirit who reveals the depth of God, like we just read earlier in the first one, who searches the depth of God. The Bible says in Revelation 2 7, it says, He speaks to us out of the depth of His own wisdom. So read Revelation 2 7 for us. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Yeah. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise mm-hmm. of God. But, but the, 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 the thing I want to point out to you is, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear yeah. what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Even now while I'm talking, yeah. let the church hear from the depth of his wonderful wisdom from his blessed truth in the word. And think about this amazing, loving, holy, eternal person. God Almighty. God Almighty. Cries within us. You know, today there's a lot of people questioning the deity, the deity of the Lord. And the deity of the Holy Spirit. There are five things you look at when it comes to deity. Five things. Number one, and let me also add, I'm not talking divinity. I'm talking deity. Because because in today's world, people may believe someone is divine, but they don't believe he is God. 2,000 years ago, deity and divinity meant the same thing. Today, deity and divinity don't mean the same thing because of the many false gods out there and false individuals who claim to be divine. But God is deity, not only divinity. He's not only, he's not only divine, he's deity. So what proves deity? Five things. Number one, omnipotence. All powerful. Satan cannot claim that. Hmm. Man cannot claim that. Number one, all might, omnipotence. Number two, omniscience, all knowing, all knowing. Number three, omnipresence. So for God to be God, He has to be all-powerful. He has to be all-knowing. And he has to be present at at all places at the same time. Number four, unchangeable. Unchangeable. Number five, eternal. These are the five attributes of deity. Deity. Only God Almighty, we see those five attributes revelations of him and attributes in the Bible in his amazing power. No one can claim that but God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And if you read the Bible, you will see clearly that the Holy Spirit is almighty. He's called the power of the highest in, in, in the book of Luke. He is all-knowing. We just read it. He knows the deep things of God. He's ever present. What does it say in the Psalms? Where shall I flee from your spirit? Psalm 139, verse 7. Where shall I go from your presence? If I am in heaven, you're there. If I'm in hell, you're there. If I take the wings of the morning, you're you're there. He is unchangeable. The same yesterday, today, and forever. God Almighty, eternal. So he is God Almighty. And this wonderful person who is God Almighty, who speaks to us from the depth of his wisdom, the truth of God's word, 
this beautiful person who is God cries within us. Look at Galatians 4, 6. Cries within every believer. Prays through us. Read Galatians 4, 6. It says what? And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. He is the spirit of his son. He is his spirit and the spirit of his son. Yeah. That's why I say he's, he's Jesus with no limit. He sent him into our hearts to cry, Abba, Father. This, these are powerful words because... Yes. When the Holy Spirit is crying, Abba, Father, he is telling us we are family. We are adopted. He causes us to be a part of the family. Hear the Holy Spirit. The minute the Holy Spirit came into your heart and, and my heart, we became family, the family of God. Imagine what family. Amazing. Family. Think about it. your mom, your dad, your family on earth. You are family with God Almighty. Your family with Jesus. Your family with the Holy Spirit. You're not family with the angels. You're family only with three, with three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And may I shock you, you won't be family in heaven with your mama. You won't be family with your papa, your grandma, or even your children. Because that's the earthly side of family. But in, in, in heaven, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new beginning. Eternal glory with God Almighty. Yeah, we will know, I believe we will know that so-and-so was my dad and was my mom and was my brother and sister. But will there really be families in that way we think about families in heaven? I don't believe so. Because the Bible says, whom do I have in heaven but thee? Whom do I have in heaven but thee? Oh, that's powerful. Whom do I have but thee, Lord? You're all. You're all in all. And that is something we must understand. When we are born again, we become members, members of the family of God. He doesn't let us go easily. Do you let your... Do you let your family go easily on in the flesh? You, do you forsake them easily? No. You love your children even when they're bad, even when they're rebellious. You love them still. You forgive them easily, much more easily than you forgive your neighbor, much more easily than you forgive somebody that, that is close to you as a friend. Oh, how quickly you forgive your children. How quickly you forgive those you love. Now, think about God Almighty. Will he let you go that easy? Never. Never. Oral Roberts, years ago, was telling me how beautiful that day was for me when he told me that God does not let us go easily. He fights to keep us, even when we are rebellious. Oh, that was so touching. Years ago. But here the Holy Spirit is crying, Abba, Father. And look at Romans 8, 26. Because now we see something even more, well, more revealing about this. In Romans 8, 20, 26, it says what? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself, or Himself, maketh intercession for us oh, with Lord. groanings which cannot be uttered. That's incredible. Not only is He crying, Abba, Father, He's crying through us. Read that again. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot so, so, be uttered. So, he is, he is crying out, we just read earlier, Galatians 4, 6. He cries out, Abba, Father, on our behalf. And he cries out prayers we cannot pray ourselves. With intensity. 
You gotta read that one more time. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Because we don't know how. For we know not what we should pray. We don't know how to pray, even even though we say we're prayer warriors. This I've never met one prayer warrior on earth. They don't even know what they're what they're saying. It's the Holy Spirit within us. That's it. Yes. Keep going. But the Spirit Himself maketh intercession for us with groanings. Groanings that cannot be be uttered by a human being in the flesh. Hmm. That's why we need Him. That's why we really need Him. Today, a lot of the prayer meetings you you listen to, it's all noisy stuff. It, It just wears you out. You're just watching it. But when the Holy Spirit prays, it is so beautiful. And think about, think about the fact we can't lose. Because here you have someone, God Almighty, the Holy Spirit, praying through you with groanings that you cannot utter yourself. And in heaven, Hebrews 7.25, and in heaven, Jesus is praying for you. One is praying through you, and one is praying for you. You can't lose, can you? Wait, hold it. One is praying through you, and one is praying for you. How can you lose? So, Hebrews 7.25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever Ever liveth to make intercession for them. So here we have the Holy Spirit as real and as divine as Jesus, God Almighty, just like Jesus, who walks by our side, dwells in our innermost, that's praying for us, who knows us better than we know ourselves. And from the depth of our being, he's making intercession to the Father on our behalf, And here is Jesus in heaven praying for us with the same intensity. Wow. Can't lose. And and the Holy Spirit, that precious blessed person, according to John 15, 26, you're going to read for us. This precious person is the one who testifies through us. He's He's not only praying through us, he also speaks through us. He testifies through us. We become witnesses with him of who Jesus is in our life. Read that again. Read John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come. It's awesome. I'm so thrilled to say it. The one who prays through me testifies through me. He's the one preaching really, not me. Yes. John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. Aha. Uh-huh. We are his witnesses, but it is the Holy Spirit who really is witnessing and testifying, using our vessel to witness through, yeah. using our vessel to testify through. We are partners with him in witness. We are partners with him in as he testifies. Amazing. Every one of these verses I've given you points to one thing, personality, personality, personality. There's a person there that is living through you, praying through you, testifying through you. There's a teacher inside of you, a teacher inside of you. Did you hear what I said? Teacher inside. The greatest teacher is inside of you. John 14, 26. Not only does it help us. Okay, read it and then I'll say what I'm going to say. Yes, sir. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. All things. And bring all all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's incredible. Not only does he help us to understand truth, 
but he's the person who daily is teaching us that truth day by day as our divine teacher. Read that again. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things bring to your remembrance. Bring all things. Now, now you've got you, you to listen to me. And I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So stay with me a few more minutes. But I want to say something that is really important. How did the apostles remember hmm. what Jesus said what Jesus did with such accuracy to write it to church and then to another church, another house church, and then before they went to heaven and before they were most of them martyred, gave us the Gospels. And the, and the New Testament that we know today, there was no New Testament after the ascension. They did not have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John for a long time, the early church. They did not have the book of Acts and the epistles. So think about that for 50 years or more, the early church did not have a New Testament to read in present day Israel and in Antioch and so on. They only had the Old Testament. But how did those writers, how did Matthew, how did Mark, who heard it from Peter, and how did Luke, who most likely heard it from Paul or someone else, know the details? How did John remember after all those years? There's the the answer. He shall bring, read that again, just that last part. He shall teach you all things and and bring all things to your remembrance. To your remembrance. And that's what happened. But he also does that with us, that whatever he he reveals to us, it's brought to our remembrance, our attention. That's why I tell people, listen, if you ever have someone give you a prophecy, if 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 you don't remember it, it was not God. If you don't remember it in a week or two or a month or a year, it just didn't happen. It was someone, and it was not the Lord saying it. Saying it. Because when God speaks, you can't forget it. Yeah. I can tell you prophecies I've had 40 years ago mm-hmm. when God really spoke. But somebody gives you a prophecy a week or two ago, and they mumble something, and you're wondering, oh, did somebody tape it? Well, you don't need anybody to tape it. Because yeah. when God speaks it, you don't need to have a tape of it. You'll remember every word. That is the Holy Spirit's work. That is the work of the Holy Ghost. And I've had prophecies given over my life that I remember every word and when they happened, who gave them, and where I was. And I'm talking 50 years ago. And I've had people prophesy over me, some of, some, some of them, and I just dismissed it. Because I didn't, you know, you, you, you know in your heart, they're, they're, they're just trying to impress you. But when is the Holy Spirit? Oh, you can't forget it. You just can't forget it. Because, you know, how can you be comforted? How can you be exhorted and edified and comforted if you can't remember it? It says prophecy is for for edification, exhortation, comfort. How can you be edified if you forget what, what, what the man said or the woman said? I made my point. Now, the Holy Spirit not only is that witness within us, testifying, He's also our amazing teacher, like I told you. He's teaching us the truth of God day by day. And and he's also our leader. A leader is the one who guides us. He is the boss in your life on earth. Because Romans 8.14 makes it very clear that he is our guide. Jesus said he will guide you, but he's our leader Let's read, please, Romans 8, 14 also, because there's, many, there's more than one verse about that. As many as are what? Led by the Holy Spirit. They are the sons of God. So he's taking you by the hand, gently leading you and I 
in, in, in the ways we should go, in the path we should walk upon. And here is also one who, who leads us so beautifully that he prevents us from going to places God does not want us to go to. Acts 16. I'm almost done, almost done. I want to pray. I just wanted to remind you, all of you, that he, the Holy Spirit, is there for you. Please don't ignore him. Please don't ignore him. Would you like to be ignored? No. Do I want to be ignored? No. Don't. Let's never ignore him again. Let's invite him and welcome him into our lives daily as our teacher, as our guide, asking for his help daily. He is within us. He's in your heart. You and him are one. One. Acts 16, verse 6 and 7 says what? It says that he prevented Paul. He prevented them. Let's read it for me. Now when they had gone throughout Phrygia. It's okay. And the region of Galatia. And were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach. They were forbidden of the Holy, to preach the word in Asia. Why? Because he was preventing them from going out of God's will. Mm. Going out of God's will. So here he is such a blessed guide, not only to take us by the hand and lead us, in the path we should walk in, but here he is also preventing us from leaving that path, leaving God's will, doing our own thing, and not God's will, and then we end up in trouble in most cases. But here he is so precious, one that has authority to tell you, no, you're not going there. I sat with Otto Roberts, Oda Roberts, I would go see him every time I had a big crusade uh, overseas. I'd go see him. He was my neighbor for 20 years or more. And I would, I, would, I would get on my knees, and he would lay his hands on me. And I'd say, now, Doc, I called him Doc for doctor. Doc, pray for me. I'm going to India. I'm going to uh, someplace in Africa. I'm going to Asia. And he would pray. And, and he'd say, I'm going with you. In my heart, I'll be there with you. And it was so precious to be, to be so close to a man of God like that. And one day I came in, and I said, lay hands on me. I'm going to Liberia. And he looked at me. I'm sitting on a chair about five feet away from him. And I'm about to get up and kneel. And he wouldn't let me come. He said, sit down. First time ever. He stared and he stared and he stared at me till I became very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. I knew God was talking to him. His eyes became a blaze, you know. And he said, you go to Liberia and you'll come back in a casket. And God will judge you for dying early. I just couldn't believe what I heard. He gave me the word of the Lord so clearly to say, no, you're not going. I had just been invited by the president of Liberia years ago. This is years ago. Through a man named Pastor John Jimenez. And two weeks before the crusade, I'm sitting in Oro's home. And he tells me, if you go, you're going to come back in a casket and God will judge you for dying early. And I said, I'm not going. I called John Jimenez, Pastor John, G G Pastor John Jimenez. I said, I can't go to, to Liberia. He got very angry. He said, how dare you cancel? The whole nation is waiting for you. There's billboards everywhere. I said, listen, Otto Roberts told me I'm going to die. And I will not die. I'm not going. He said, you believe that man? I said, you bet I believe that man. And I knew in my heart that Otto learned from God. Oh, he was so upset with me. John was so upset with me. Two weeks later to the day, 
there was a war that erupted in Liberia. And the president that invited me was out of power. And people were killed in Liberia. And I, I would have been one of them. And I said, thank God for Oral Roberts. It, was, I, it shook me up. Because a civil war broke out. Had I gone, a civil war would have been going on while I was there. Imagine that. A man of God. But it was the Holy Spirit who loved me enough to say, you're not going. Hmm. And he's done that more than once. More than once. I went to India back in the early 2000s. And someone invited me to go back years later. And the Lord warned me again, you're not going. And I had to cancel. And they, 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 they were writing right after that on the streets before I came and I said, I'm not going. But it was, it was oral and others. And my mom was, was actually one of them who said, he said, no, God says no. Wow. And I had to stop it. And there were thousands of people waiting for me. No, my brother, don't you dare go where God has not sent you. If there's a million people waiting for you, don't you dare. I'm talking to somebody. And you know in your heart, uh uh-uh, it's dangerous. You wait till God opens the way. You wait till the Holy Spirit opens the way. And today we need him, the Holy Spirit, more than ever. Because he is the one here on earth. John 16, 7, please, as I close. He is the one on earth who is now in the place of Jesus on earth. It says what? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Yeah. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. It was necessary for the Lord to leave and represent us before the Father for another person to come and take his place. And I believe this is the promise of the Father, Acts 1-4. I call it the promise of promises. The promise of promises. Acts 1-4, and I'm going to pray. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait, wait. for the promise of the, of Father. the Father. Who is the promise of the Father? The Holy Spirit. He is the promise of the promise. <laughs> the great promise of the Father. The promise of all promises. Lord, I thank you. Lift your hands with me. Lord, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Where would we be without him? Wonderful Jesus, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to be with us daily to guide us daily, to teach us daily. Thank you, blessed Holy Spirit, for not leaving us. Thank you for being so patient and so loving. Thank you for revealing Jesus to us day by day. Thank you for never never walking away from us when we don't even deserve to have you around us and in us. Yet you've never left us even when we've been rebellious. Thank you for being there always for us. Thank you for changing our hearts day by day by day. Till that day when we become full, having received the fullness of the stature of Jesus in our hearts. You haven't given up, and you never will give up. For we are transformed into the image of the Lord Jesus by your power and presence by the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful Holy Spirit, thank you for that. And thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being the most exciting person I've ever met. I never know. Never leave my life. Never leave any of our lives. Never. Purify us today as clean vessels. Wash us anew, Lord. Oh, dearest Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We ask you to wash us with thy blood today. And thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for making that blood so real. 
So real in our lives. So real in our lives. So important in our hearts. The blood of Jesus. Thank you for keeping the devil away from us and keeping us free from his influence and voice. We don't want to hear his voice, Lord. We want to hear your voice, your sweet voice within us. He that hath an ear to you, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. We are your church. Never stop talking to us. We don't want to hear any other voice but your voice. Sweetest, blessed Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. One voice, millions of souls. When young Benny Hinn first became a Christian, his heart quickly yearned to share his newfound faith with others. At first it was just one voice, leading his family members to Christ, one by one, culminating in the moment, in the family's living room, when both of his parents bowed their heads and were gloriously saved. Then, miraculously, during the very first time Benny Hinn ministered publicly, his lifelong stuttering disability was healed the moment he stood to speak. The adventure was just beginning. That slender young preacher's voice was amplified electronically as his reputation grew through the 1970s and 1980s. His voice became a regular presence on a growing number of local television stations, as well as national coverage on the Trinity Broadcasting System network of cable, broadcast, and satellite systems. In the 1990s, with the phenomenal success of his international best-selling book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit, and with increasing exposure on television with his program, This Is Your Day, his voice was broadcast to vast unseen multitudes, quickly becoming one of the most popular inspirational broadcasts. Then, during the 2000s, in addition to history-making crusades, Benny Hinn's one voice reached new heights of exposure at history's largest healing services around the globe. In addition, one state-of-the-art technologies were quickly made obsolete by the very latest methods. These changes included moving from magnetic audio and video tapes to digital formats. As information technologies have quickly changed, the revolution influenced every area of our ministry. During the 2010s and into the 2020s, with accelerated breakthroughs on many fronts, Benny Hinn Ministries has been able to emerge again and again on the cutting edge crest of innovations. During the worldwide COVID pandemic, at a time when both ministries, organizations, and businesses were floundering, Benny Hinn's voice grew with the advent of live and interactive internet services. Come check you today, yes. and you'll see a miracle yes, happen to you. Roland, God oh, bless you. I receive it. I receive no, 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 it. I'm telling you, factually, the healing has begun. Where he once ministered in person to record-breaking audiences, he was able to instantly reach to the unlimited uttermost. Today, nearly 50 years after his one voice began proclaiming the gospel message of salvation and healing, Benny Hinn has spoken to billions through crusades, television, and the internet. Benny Hinn's one voice continues to grow because of God's anointing and the faithful support of his partners. The adventure continues. Benny Hinn Ministries has stayed on the cutting edge for the past five decades making the move from analog television to digital broadcasts, HDTV, the internet, streaming live events, and social media. Today's fast-changing, bold new world brings an entirely new set of challenges. What we did in 1974 when this ministry began, or in 2000, or even 2022, will not be effective in 2023. And who knows what 2024 and beyond will bring where we once could spend four years converting from standard to high definition. We now have far less time to change our technologies. Now we have only months. We must move quickly and cost effectively, especially into breakthrough areas of ministry, preserving the past for future generations. The ministry of Christian media pioneers such as Billy Graham, Catherine Kuhlman, Paul Crouch, and Rex Humbert have been marked by quickly adapting to the newest methods of communication. 
Benny Hens Ministry has been at the forefront of each innovation that provides a better way of taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world more effectively and efficiently. Today, more than ever before, we stand on the edge of a bold new world. From the beginning, we have been faithful in preserving our legacy with the available technology. The mountains of tapes, now centrally located in Texas, are evidence of that. Long ago, the Lord made it clear that keeping and storing all archives and resources should be a top priority, and we've been very careful to keep all of the recordings through the years. In addition to groundbreaking crusades, miracle services, and This Is Your Day programs, we have historic interviews with Oral Roberts, Rex Humbard, and so many other world leaders. Yet, insidiously, hidden among all the mountains of videotapes and audio recordings is something no one could have imagined when these were freshly recorded and cataloged. With the passage of time has come deterioration. This is a new hour. This is the Joshua generation. Now I want to tell you something. The first thing God said to Moses is go down. The first thing he said to Joshua is arise. We're not a people who are going down. We are the ones who are rising up. Even with controlled temperature storage facilities, time has been the enemy. Tape warping, decay, housing detachments, cracks, shredding, and breakdowns happen. Chemical changes start to happen with the lubricant in a videotape's binder layer. Worse, the transfer process is fraught with potential danger, since each use of analog tape can cause irretrievable loss of data and content. Older tapes break, disintegrate, and require surgical-type methods of restoration. Thus far, we've rescued and digitized 10,500 of the 13,437 tapes from the past half century. To God be the glory. A conservative estimate to finish this digitation process is a million dollars to restore the final 30% of these disintegrating tapes and move everything over to a much more permanent digital format. The project, already started, can be completed fairly quickly, certainly in plenty of time for our ministry's golden anniversary in 2024. God has given us the technology to use for His purpose, and He will hold us accountable for preserving the unique anointing on this ministry. We cannot delay. The other area of major opportunity is artificial intelligence, also called AI. Imagine, if you will, what could happen if all of our digitized material could be used to translate everything into every language on Earth. It is possible. Even better, how exciting would it be to translate these materials using the same voice as originally spoken, yet in all of the different dialects around the world? Pastor Benny speaks several languages, but imagine if his teachings became available online with him speaking in Swahili, Mandarin, Portuguese, Belarusian, or Cherokee. This amazing AI tool will be useful around the world, but imagine how it could impact people closer to home. Suddenly, Pastor Benny and his guests can be on stage or on sets, speaking with their voices, making their cadences and tones, but sharing the gospel in a virtually unlimited number of native languages. It's time to finish the job. Through digitation, Pastor Benny's legacy, life's work, calling, and anointing will be preserved for generations yet to come until the Lord returns. And with artificial intelligence tools that can translate all of the digitized materials into languages around the world, we can truly fulfill our Lord's great commission. Nearly 50 years ago, this great adventure known as Benny Hen Ministries began with one voice. Today, that one voice continues to be amplified over and over through every possible means. What happens next will be the greatest blessing of all. Isn't it wonderful what the Lord has done? And to Jesus be all the glory. I wanted to show you this beautiful report about the digitizing of thousands and thousands of hours already of the great meetings from the past. Because we want to keep them for our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We would have lost a lot of these tapes had we not started working on them. I want to say thank you for helping us, but we are still not finished. 
We have 4,000 hours still to complete. We've completed 10,000 hours already, 10,000 hours. And you saw the difference with the before and after. We were actually losing the tapes. And now here they've come back to life because of your help. And I want to say thank you with all my heart for helping us. But the job is not done yet. We have got to finish the job now, 4,000 hours. And then we're going to start the translations. What you heard today was the voice of a robot <laughs> talking. It wasn't a lady. It was actually a robot talking to you. And isn't that amazing that this can be done? But now we can do it in every language on earth. I wanted you to get a little taste of the voice of a person, but it wasn't really a person. A lady just kind of talked, and then they copied her voice. And what I'm going to do now is I, they're going to have me tape my voice in English. And they're going to translate everything you, that, that, that you'll see in the future in every language on the globe. Every language. Think about the impact it's going to have worldwide when we show the great crusades, the great meetings. OCC days, the great conferences, and so much more, not only in English, but in every language on the globe. So let's finish the job first with the 4,000 hours left to be digitized. And please, please, please help me now because we don't want to lose those tapes. The longer we wait, then they, they, they will, you know, they will, won't even be able to work with them. But you saw what has happened. You saw the difference. You saw the bad you know, pictures from the past and how new now, how they came back alive so beautifully because of the new equipment and the way they do it now. So we need your help still. So thank you, thank you. I just wanted to show you that your money is doing the job. What you gave in the past is really making it happen. But let's keep doing it for the Lord, please. This is for his glory. I talk to young people all the time who have seen things from the past and their life has been changed. I was in a place not long ago in a restaurant, in fact, and we were showing this waitress what God did in Venezuela, because she's from Venezuela, and she was just glued. We showed it you know, on the phone, and now you can show all this on you know, people's phone and iPad and laptops and all that. But it's wonderful what God is doing worldwide. And let's keep doing it for the Lord and His glory, because now it can go to every nation on earth, in every language on earth, because of your help. I want to pray with you that God will bless you for this as you obey him. Blessed Jesus, thank you. Lord, I pray you'll bless your people. Multiply them on every side and bless them financially, Lord, as they bless your work. So your word will go to every nation on earth, Lord. I give you the praise for touching our young people and our grandchildren, children and grandchildren, Lord. And great-grandchildren, we give you all the praise. And God's people said, Amen. Let's do it for them. Let's do it for our children. Let's do it for our grandchildren. Great-grandchildren, so they will see the power of God. They will not be lost. All right. You can give right now on the platform. You're watching me on. You can go to our website, benihin.org. Or you can simply text BHM45777. The easiest is website. And we're upgrading our website, by the way. You're going to see some exciting new things on our website, benihim.org. So thank you for loving. Thank you for giving. And let's keep glorifying our wonderful Savior. Much love to you. Thanks again.